Damn bad guy. So the agronomic sciences teach us that all this aerobic activity cannot live other than very near the surface. It needs to have access to the oxygen from the atmosphere above. This is inexact. The overthrowing of such an established theory opens a wide door. This permits the light of misunderstood phenomena to enter. This should also be well received by the agriculturist, especially the practicing biological agriculturist, who should be happy that these revelations permit him to use them and elaborate on, their, on them for this benefit for his benefit. It appears that then that if there are no plants, there cannot be any aerobic life in depth. In depth, in depth, depth. Yeah. If if plant life exists, it organizes its biological medium of living oxygen even in depth. The plant, in accomplishing its mission, arranged scientifically its own habitat, renders life to it as deep as go the roots in order to sustain its own life. The plant enriches the soil, and in its absence, the soil is dead. That's true. That's very, very true. May the, hold on, I'm coming. May the official agronomist teachers in universities forgive me for having made this discovery to be taught someday. May others nonconformists in the teaching. Hang on, my nerves, this little ladybug. Teachings of biological agriculture accept this concept of aerobic life in the soil to be found even in depth. Although it had been taught to them that this way was only possible on the very near surface of the soil. Because huh? you have pants, so you're not going to get picked. What do you mean, get picked? Like, see those little rough? Here, there might be something like a little snake. What do you mean, Gavin? I don't get one thing. There's nothing here, it's plants. Um, it's just not here. Hey. You can see that that's what happens when there's no plant, the soil dies. Hmm. But when there's plant, it enriches the soil. That's what it does. I hope we don't get caught picking it. Pick one right now. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> Open it for me. The other way, Gavin. The other way we peel a corn. Hold this. Hold this. Oh. <gasps> They're ready! I dare you to bite into it. But it's not the corn. Either. Good job. It's not the corn to eat. I want, I want to use it to pick up a stem. This, these, this, this is, they ain't a bash. Look how strong the stems are! Yeah. It's like bending when they break it. And come and bring it. See, they all have pointy hands. Well, that's a good one. So that happens when you don't live in the city. You get a field like that, field like that, like that close by. And oh, little GMO corn. One. Certainly GMO. You cannot eat that. I don't think it's for human consumption. You can probably eat it. Yeah, I it. Why not? I dare you. Take a little bite. See if it tastes good. It looks very hard. It looks very hard. What's making that noise? This is the cricket. I hate those. You won't give them food.
I think you just squashed one. They'll probably munch on it. Huh? Hey, if you're dying of hunger, you might eat this. Right, if you're dying of hunger and you're surrounded by heat. Oh, you're gonna heat it. If you're hungry, you're gonna heat it. Oh, For sure. People come here to, to, to do some biking and some skating and, and running, but we do here to do a video. Everybody does this thing. I want to see how many kills I We all have our things to do, our sacred mission to accomplish. So, 13th letter. This could be in there. In oh, the I was done with this one. So, 14th letter. Fourteenth letter. Since we are talking about pots and flowers, Ew. let me tell you an amusing story. Ugh. By accident one day, one noticed that among my flower pots, some would grow plants better than others would. After some analysis, these pots had rested for long periods in the earth itself. When used for new growth, they seem to have impregnated themselves. Yevin, talk to it. It's on a piece of clay. I've already explained. Okay, let me tell. When used for new growth, they seem to have impregnated themselves of the powers given to them from the Tuileric currents. They seem to have, like a magnet, impregnated themselves of the electric powers more than a pot that had not been previously embedded in the soil. In the same order of things, I will one day tell you about my dogs and their food. When I propose to plant a vine, I lay it horizontally in the ground for a while. This gives the vine a power quite remarkable as to taking fast and having vigor of growth. The scientist Faraday demonstrated that electricity could not pass through a cage. The following experiment is classic. A growing plant in a pot that is totally surrounded by, by a metal or screen cage on all sides, including top and bottom, dies. The cage must be isolated from being grounded. This is done in such way as to isolate it from the earth. Electricity cannot penetrate such a cage. If such, if such a situation allows a plant to die in order to survive, that plant needs the atmospheric electric currents of conduction to allow it to accomplish its mission for the right to life. Being deprived of both the currents from the sky and the tuileric current, it cannot survive. There is no flow of electricity through its body. I'll be 